Warning. The following story contains mild sexual situations that may be unsuitable for younger viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. I think just about everyone that's active in the dating community has had the occasional experience with quote-unquote crazy eyes. No, this isn't some cryptid who preys on the innocent single looking to mingle or anything of the like. It's more of a condition than something paranormal or otherworldly, I suppose. Male, female, gay, straight, somewhere in between, or as yet undecided, there are crazy eyes in every community. They may seem so normal, if that's even a thing, when you first meet them. Average conversation, maybe even some of those little mannerisms that drive you absolutely nuts. You know, the biting of the lower lip, stroking of the hair gently over an ear, wrinkling the nose with a smile. Those little things that invest your interest right off the bat. Sometimes it's not until it's too late before those eyes sell the actual truth of those things. More often than not, you can escape those encounters unscathed. Maybe a few weeks of awkward text messaging or the occasional parked car on the other side of the road just outside your house. But it genuinely doesn't last. Valentine's Day of last year though, that one left me questioning if I will ever even attempt to date again. My buddy James and I had come up with precautions for such things. A simple alert, locked and loaded before meeting a new prospective mate. We called it the abort code. It's silly and childish, yes, but we had both experienced more than our fair share of evenings out on the town that required some help to escape. We would have the message, how's your mom and them, typed out before the evening's events would even begin, ready to just hit send if things went sideways. It was a natural enough conversation starter that shouldn't expose what was actually going on. Should this be one of the more radically crazy types who swiped the phone from your hand to make sure you weren't texting another girl or something? Yes, this has happened before. On that occasion, I was technically messaging another woman, that woman being my mother. But even after explaining that to my date, Julia or Jen or something, she had to double check. The night went downhill from there. This was before the abort code was a thing. So I just had to grin and bear it. After that incredibly long night, James and I came up with this. We had been best friends since childhood, so we had a vested interest in one another's potential significant others. We never arranged dates on the same day, so we would be ready to assist the other should anything go wrong. If we received the notification, it was time to spring into action. The first step was a phone call requiring a bit of acting on the part of the one in need of a bailout. There would be shock and maybe even tears depending on how severe the crazy was, ending up with having to ditch the date to get to the hospital ASAP. Most times, this was enough to get the job done. The insane person in question would sometimes offer to come along to help soothe the weary and pain-stricken heart, wounded by whoever, quote-unquote, had been in a terrible accident, just not always. At the end of the day, even crazy people feel uncomfortable around someone suffering, especially if they only recently met. Should this not be enough to get the job done, then step two would be set into motion, if no all clear was given within 15 minutes. This would require acting on both sides, as we would have to show up in person to attest to the vitality of how grim the situation was. This part would make just about every single person at the restaurant feel uncomfortable, as we would make a full scene with our dramatic performance. By the time the improvised play would reach its end, we would both be practically running out the door, leaving teary apologies in our wake. 
The only downside to having to take things this far was whatever restaurant or bar this would take place in was now burned for at least a year. We couldn't risk inadvertently letting the regulars in on the act, not if we didn't want to blow our cover. We only had to resort to this one time. Her name was was Lucy or Lenore, definitely something with an L, I think. Anyway, she looked pretty embarrassed by the ridiculous performance we put on, as did just about everyone else that was around. But it did the trick, though. She didn't even text the next day to check in, so I considered that a job well done. Step three, the final step, would be an act of pure desperation. While we were fortunate enough to never have to use this, we would carry some laxatives on every date. Whether we took it ourselves or had to essentially quote-unquote roofie our crazy dates would be dependent on the scenario. It hadn't yet been fully flushed out. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't resist. Either way, the results would be sure to stick a fork in things, or so we hoped. It was still just a working theory after all. Now, this may be taking things a bit too far, but it's like they say, all is fair in love and war, right? That was good enough for me anyway. So, it was about a week before Valentine's Day, last year, when a work friend set me up with one of his sister's friends. Well, he was more of an associate, I guess. He had only worked there for about a month or two, but seemed a friendly sort. I was very resistant at first, being generally not a fan of hookups, but after he showed me the girl's picture, I was invested fully. Yeah, call me shallow if you'd like, but that girl was gorgeous. She had dark hair, dark skin, bright green eyes, and a smile that would melt a glacier. Perhaps if I had allowed the idea that there had to be a reason that someone this breathtaking was still single, maybe I could have made better decisions that night. Unfortunately, my mind was not in charge at that time. Yeah, I'm a pig, I know. For what it's worth, I most definitely learned my lesson, the error of my ways and all that. James was never a fan of Valentine's Day, for reasons that are not mine to share, but I still checked in with him to make sure that he was available, just in case. As expected, he had nothing planned for the day, so I went ahead and set it up. Rainy, the stunning girl in question, had texted me back and forth over that week leading up to our official meeting. My expectation was building with every message. We discussed every single thing, from taste in movies and music to where we went to school, and even preferred sexual positions. Hey, she brought it up, no innuendo intended. After those days of messaging back and forth, I didn't pick up on the slightest of red flags that some crazy could be lingering behind her bright eyes. Okay, so after what happened, I went back through the thread and found that there were a few. But as I said, I wasn't exactly guided by the top floor at the time. Still, I should have picked up on it when she asked about my ex-girlfriends and the like. Those bitches just don't appreciate you. One message read, You just had to wait for the right girl. Another one read, They continued on like that. They seemed innocent enough at the time, but I would normally feel a bit uneasy when these things came up before we even met. Regardless of my excitement, I still arranged to meet at the restaurant. She came off a little offended when I recommended this over picking her up, but I wouldn't budge on this one. I've endured a few awkward rides over the years as I returned a crazy eye or two to their home, so this was a far better option than forcing the temptation of leaving someone stranded. It may seem like a childish way to think, but even in the face of a nut job, I hate to leave someone behind without a way to get back home. 
Okay, I had to leave a girl money for a taxi before, but that couldn't be avoided. It was that, or worry she would jerk the wheel halfway back to her place. Rainy was already at the restaurant when I arrived, something that caught me a little off guard at first. As I pulled up a good 15 minutes early to grab us a table before she got there. As soon as I walked in, prepared to ask the hostess to jot my name down, I heard that very information yelled out from somewhere in the dining area. When I noticed the head of my date peeking out from a booth near the back, I felt stunned for a moment, giving an awkward smile and a wave to her. Well, just about every single face in the crowd turned to look at me. I attempted to ignore the chuckles and the mumbles from the tables that I weaved around, keeping my head hunched while my face flushed. While I can't deny that I was somewhat flattered by how Rainy was carrying on, enthusiastically waving and grinning as I made my uncomfortable approach, I was growing a little unsettled about what the night may have in store. Rainy, my date, looked absolutely stunning in that red slinky dress, her raven hair hanging to her bare shoulders. Hi, I'm... My attempt to apologize for being quote-unquote late was interrupted by my dining companion throwing her arms around me, damn near squeezing the breath from my lungs in the process. Though we had been texting back and forth a good bit, I was not prepared for such an enthusiastic greeting. Given the fact that she was even more stunning in person than in the pictures I had seen, my logical mind took a back seat to that far more task-oriented, lesser brain than many of us possess. You know, the one that habitually gets us into a lot of trouble from time to time. I know, I'm not exactly proud of it, but what can I say? It's so nice to finally meet in person, she said, finally releasing her surprisingly strong bear hug. Um, yeah, I said with an awkward laugh. <laughs> you look beautiful. Well, that's an odd thing to begin with, she said the wide smile fading from her face as she took her seat. I'm more than a pretty face, you know. Oh, uh, I didn't mean to insinuate. I just... Oh my God, she said, laughing almost manically. You're such an easy mark. I was just messing with you, dude. Oh, um, you got me, I said, suddenly feeling tense and a bit exhausted. That was a good one. Every single word that she spoke felt like an announcement, as though she was calling out to every single person in the room. It almost seemed like a performance designed to make everyone in the room feel uncomfortable, including myself. Now, I've never been a fan of being in the spotlight, even on that occasion where James and I had to resort to step two. Of course, part of the point of that particular act of desperation was to make things as awkward as humanly possible. Plus, I was always a little braver in the presence of my best friend, a good bit more arrogant too, for that matter. As soon as I took my seat, I tried to subtly sneak my phone from my pocket, preparing to send James the abort code as soon as the opportunity presented itself. With Rainy glaring, Wide-eyed and unblinking, looking like she may burst into a mad fit of laughter at any second, I thought it would be best to keep my actions limited for the time being. Needless to say, but I will anyway, I was well aware that I was in the presence of a quote-unquote crazy eye, perhaps the most aggressive case that I had personally witnessed. As things progressed, my date kept her gaze fixed on me, even when the waiter arrived to take our drink order, I was growing almost desperate to escape. When I asked for a simple glass of water, making the lame excuse that I had to be at work early in the morning, Rainy practically barked at the waiter, demanding that he bring me a Jack and Coke instead. While that may have partially been my fault, as I had mentioned that drink to be my favorite, 
Over the previous days of texting, I still tried to give the waiter, who looked almost dumbfounded, an apologetic shrug. With the expression he returned, I had a feeling he knew where my head was at at the time. Water? She said, looking almost disappointed. Really? I just don't want to be hung over for work, you know. Just call in sick or something. You're going to have a late night tonight, if you play your cards right, that is. I almost jumped out of my seat when I felt her toes caressing my inner thigh, her lips peeling back into a mischievous smile. The waiter, who was still standing there, looking as uncomfortable as I felt, finally backed away from the table. I'll be right back with those drinks, he said, shaking his head. I just glanced at him, wearing my best quote-unquote help-me expression, before turning back to the wide-eyed woman whose foot was slowly creeping further up my leg. Um, I have to go to the bathroom, I said, jumping up from my seat before my date's actions could leave me in no fit state to stand up in a public place. I caught a brief glimpse of her agitated expression before I sped off in search of the facilities. But as soon as I was clear, I sent the Hal Mary text to James. Once I made it to my chosen panic room, I took a seat in the furthest stall, eagerly awaiting a reply. Though I knew my friend would wait a good ten minutes before calling with a prearranged panic-inducing tale, I couldn't bring myself to head back to the table just yet. I even sent a few follow-up messages just to state the urgency of the situation. After a few minutes and no word back from my partner in crime, I was growing more anxious about potentially being stuck there. Sure, I could have just made something up and ran off if it came down to it, but given Rainey's behavior up to this point, I was certain she would not make that easy. I even considered sneaking out while she wasn't looking, as childish as that may seem, but something about this woman assured me that there would be some retaliation for that. No, my only safe bet, the only clean way to break free of this, was the abort code. James had never let me down before. I had to believe that he would come through this time. Finally, with the 10-minute mark nearing, I reluctantly made my way back to the table. I could practically see the steam billowing in Rainey's nostrils as I drew closer to it, causing me to feel the tension returning to my extremities. I'm so sorry for that, I said, sitting back down and avoiding eye contact. Did you get so excited that you had to go rub one out? She said wearing the expression of a disappointed mother more than an overly eager date. What? No, I... There's no shame in it, you know, she said, sipping on her daiquiri. Everyone does it. But I, I didn't. I had to... Whatever, dude. You just better have enough left in your tank for tonight. I felt almost stunned in the headlights of her rigid gaze as she laid her glass back down. I ordered our food. You were gone so long, I didn't want to have to wait any longer, she said. Oh, I responded, choosing not to ask what god-awful dish she had spitefully requested for me. Um, thanks. I really am sorry. Can't avoid the call of nature, you know. I then attempted to chuckle, something that was not remotely genuine at the time. But she continued to stare knives at me. Well, now I must answer a similar call, she said, sliding out of her seat. Don't run off now while I'm gone. It would be quite rude. She spoke so coldly before gingerly strolling off to the restroom. I found myself stunned once more. Had my mind not been all over the place, I may have been better prepared for what came next. My being frozen in place, staring blankly at the back of the restaurant, 
until she started to make her return trip from the restroom. I only had seconds to send another text to James, hoping to God that he would hold up to our failsafe. How is your mom in them? I swiftly texted, hoping that the screaming capital letters would alert him to how seriously I needed his attention. I quickly tucked my phone back into my pocket as soon as I hit send, right as my crazy-eyed date slipped back into her seat across from me, giving her what I hoped would be an effective enough quote-unquote I wasn't doing anything smile. I was momentarily distracted by the vibrating noise coming from her purse. As she pulled her bag onto her lap, dipping her hand inside of it and removing the contents hidden to me by the table, she glanced up to meet my gaze with far more fury behind her eyes than before. She then looked back down to her purse intently. The sound of her fingers tapping across the screen of what I assumed to be her own phone before setting the bag back on the table. I don't know about you, but I could use another drink, she said, a gentle smile returning to her face. Yeah, I said, me too. As a more friendly conversation began, one that provided me with far less discomfort than anything this night had presented me with so far, I hoped that the tension had finally eased completely. When my best friend's notification tone jingled from my pocket, however, I would find that my circumstances may be far bleaker than I realized. Given that my date no longer looked as batshit crazy as she did only moments before, I hoped it would be safe to at least glance at the message I received. I'm sorry, I said with a more genuine laugh as I swiped the screen. They are fine. How are yours? The reply from James read. Completely puzzled and a little dumbstruck by this, I sent back a questioning WTF man? Question mark, before looking back to the woman on the other side of the table. The strangely satisfied and slightly arrogant smirk that she was wearing did not fully register with me at first. When the vibrating sound buzzed from her lap though, I finally began to put things together. Again, she looked down as her fingers tapped across the screen, looking back up a second or two later. When she lifted the phone from her lap, dropping it back in her purse and laying it down beside her on the bench. Just focus on the gorgeous woman across from you, man. We'll talk tomorrow appeared in response to the text I sent. A flood of questions then attacked my mind all at once. How did she get his phone? What did she have to do to get it? Where the hell is James? These questions were crowding my thoughts so quickly that my mind couldn't hope to catch up. Just as I began to convince my voice to work again, our friendly waiter arrived, wielding a tray of delicious smelling food. What the hell is going on here? I asked, the waiter cutting his eyes from me to Rainy as he hesitantly laid down the plates. It's our food, honey, she replied with a giggle. <laughs> That's kind of what happens in restaurants. Um, would you guys like anything else? The uncomfortable looking server said, still glancing between the two of us. You know what I mean, I said. That'll be all, my psychotic date said, smiling at the man who began to back away the second she granted permission to do so. How the hell did you get that phone? I asked, losing my patience with this ordeal. I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, she said mockingly. Can we just eat already? I'm starved. Don't change the subject. How did you get it? Did you steal it? What the fuck is going on, you fucking psycho? I yelled. Dude! She said, reaching into her bag and pulling out her phone. This is mine, okay? She said, sliding it across the table 
I don't know this James guy. I whipped the device from the table, swiping the screen to inspect the messages. As expected, there was nothing sent or received for the last few hours. Then, who were you texting, huh? Who was texting you? I said, um, okay. A, this is our first date, and my personal life is none of your damn business. Not unless I decide otherwise. And B, I wasn't messaging anyone. I was shutting off my Facebook notifications. She said, Yeah, bullshit! I responded, Look, she said, with a heavy sigh, I'm hungry. Can we just eat? Whatever is going on with you, we can figure that out later. But I haven't eaten anything today. And I'm getting a headache. Well, the burger that she had ordered for me did look and smell intoxicating. I was not buying what she was selling for one single moment. I knew she had my friend's phone, likely still tucked away in her bag. But as I felt that familiar sensation of every single eye in the crowd glaring at me, I knew I had to settle things down. Whatever was going on here, I would have to play along to get to the bottom of it. I had to get her to let her guard down. I let out a shaky sigh, reaching for my burger and taking a bite, while my mind attempted to figure out the best course of action. I'm sorry, I said. It was a long day at work, and I didn't mean to take it out on you. Her face then reverted back to that carefree smile as she reached for her matching dish. No, I'm sorry, she said. I'm just nervous. I, I never felt this way about anyone before. Oh, um, yeah, me too. I lied, attempting to keep things civil until I could figure out a way to get to her purse. Do you believe in love at first sight? She asked. Those wide and unblinking eyes glared into mine once again, a smile stretching across her lips. There was something behind her gaze and her words that caused a cold sweat to form on my back and brow. When the waiter brought another round of drinks, not so much as uttering a single word as he laid the glasses in place, my date. Still, just stared at me with that eerie grin. A strange sort of panic manifested within me, begging me to run now before it was too late. I came close to doing that very thing. That was before the sudden inset of dizziness. Oh my God! Are you okay? Rainy asked as my head lifelessly drooped from one side to the other. My eyes attempting to roll back. I, I feel weird, like, like loopy. I. My heart was practically beating through my chest as the realization of what was happening struck me, but my body and mind were on a separate playing field at the time. Ricky, my date said to the waiter, whose name I hadn't caught until now. Gonna need some help here. Took you long enough, he said. You sure about this guy? Oh yeah, she said. I could almost hear the smile in her voice as my head fell limp on the table. I just know he's the one. What? What? The... Was all I managed to get out before everything went black. <laughs>